So hello again everybody, how's it going? I am Arjun, a pre-final year computer science student from Sastra University, a four-star coder on CodeChef and the president of CodeChef Sastra chapter. Welcome to our channel CodeChef. If you are into competitive programming, want to learn data structures, algorithms and master them, this is the one-stop destination for you to learn. So please consider hitting the subscribe button and press the bell icon for the notifications. So without any further ado, let's get started. So today we will be having a look at the problem, maximize the bridges which is an easy problem that appeared in the November long challenge 2021 and the prerequisite to solve this is graphs. You need not know complex graph algorithms or even how to implement graphs in C++ or Python. You just need to know what a graph is and what a bridge is. Even if you don't know what a bridge is, I am here to help you out. So without any further ado, let's get into the problem statement. So the problem statement goes like this. Chef is given two integers n and m where n is going to be the number of vertices and m is going to be the number of edges in a connected undirected graph. You must find any connected undirected graph with exactly n vertices and m edges such that the number of bridges in G is maximized. And they are also given that G cannot have any self loops or multiple edges. If there is more than one connected undirected graph the maximum number of bridges, you may print any one of them. So what is a bridge? A bridge is an edge whose removal increases the number of connected components of the graph. So now let's have a look at an example. So this is an example connected undirected graph with four vertices and four edges. So here if you see, if I am going to remove this edge, there is no increase in the number of connected components. So definitely this edge is not a bridge. Same goes for these two. If we are going to remove any of these, the number of connected components will not increase. But what about this edge? If we are going to remove this edge, we will have two connected components. So this edge which was over here is going to be called a bridge. In simple words, any edge that is not involved in a cycle in a connected undirected graph is going to be known as a bridge. So we must be finding any connected undirected graph with exactly n vertices m edges such that the number of bridges is going to be maximized and that particular graph should not have any self loops or multiple edges. How do we approach this problem? First let us have a look at a sample test case. For example if n equals 5 and m equals 4 how will our graph look like? So we know that the minimum number of edges for any connected undirected graph would be n minus 1 and here if you see the number of edges is going to be exactly n minus 1 which is 4. So the only possible graph that can be drawn is going to look like this. So what are the number of bridges? So we see that none of these edges are involved in any cycles so that in total we have 4 bridges that is all the edges we have drawn are going to be bridges. So we know that the minimum number of edges for any connected undirected graph would be n minus 1 and we see that if a graph is going to have the minimum number of edges it will have the maximum number of bridges that is for any graph n minus 1 is not only the minimum number of edges but also the maximum number of bridges. So now what if m is not equal to n minus 1 that is the problem over here. So now let us have a look at how to approach this problem. So let us take another case. Now let's take n equals 6 and m equals 10. We need to find a graph which has 6 vertices and 10 edges such that the number of bridges is maximized. So first our, our approach will go like this. First we will draw the graph with minimum edges. So we see that we will be drawing a graph with 6 vertices and 5 edges which will look like this. So now we are left with, so we have already drawn 5 edges, so now we are left with 5 more edges to be drawn. So if n equals 6 and m equals 5, this graph would have been our answer. So now let's add these 5 edges one by one. So initially we have 5 bridges in total. but Whenever we are going to add one more edge, our aim would be not to disturb the already existing bridges. If at worst case, we will have to do so. So how do we add our first edge? So 
we are going to define an algorithm to solve this problem. So if we are going to do that, we should be adding edges for following some pattern or strategy. So what is the strategy we are going to follow? We will assume that these vertices are from left to right. So a graph will not have any directions, but in this approach, we are assuming that these vertices are arranged from left to right. And we will be adding edges from each vertex towards its left. So now let's see how it goes. Can we add an edge from one to any vertex towards its left? No, because there are no vertices. So now let's have a look at two. Can we add an edge from two to one? No, because we have been told that there cannot be any self loops or multiple edges. So that is not possible. So the first edge we can add will be from three. So first we add an edge from three to one. So we see that these two edges were already bridges, but now as we have formed a cycle by adding a new edge, these edges will no more be bridges. So we have disturbed two edges so that our current count of bridges would be three. So we are now left with four more edges to be drawn. So how do we draw the next edge? So is there some possibility of drawing an edge from three to two? No, because an edge from three to two already exists. So we go to the next vertex possible. So from four, we can draw an edge to one. So now we have formed another cycle and we have disturbed this edge. So now we are left with two more bridges three more edges to be drawn. So is there some possibility for drawing the next edge without disturbing these two bridges? Yes, we have one possibility. We have already drawn from four to one. The next possibility will be from four to two. There is no edge already existing between four to two so that now we can draw one. Four to three will not be possible. So now we have two edges to be drawn and we haven't disturbed the existing number of bridges. So yeah. The next edge would be from 5 to 1. So now we have disturbed this edge. So now we are only left with one more edge to be drawn. But we have only one more bridge. And this will go from 5 to 2 because there are no edges from 5 to 2 existing already. So this is how we will be drawing the edges. So we see that the maximum number of bridges that can be formed with n equals 6 and m equals 10 will go, is going to be only one bridge that is this one. So I hope you got the approach. Now let's define the algorithm. So the algorithm goes as follows. So first we find the minimum number of edges to be drawn and we print them. So how do we print them? As for the input format given, you are going to print m lines containing two integers u and v, which will represent an edge between the vertices u and v. So what do we do? We run a for loop from one to n minus one, and we print i and i plus one. So as we saw over here, the first vertex is first edge is going to be from one to two, next from two to three, then three to four, four to five, and five to six. So we do that. Then we find the remaining edges to be drawn, which is going to be equal to m minus n minus 1. So how do we draw this? We have seen that the first edge will be always from 3 to 1. As we are following the rule that we will be making edges from a vertex towards the left of it. So 2 to 1 is not possible. 1 doesn't have any vertex towards its left. So the first edge will be from 3 to 1. So we start our iteration from i equals 3 and then what do we do? We run another for loop which is going to start from 1 and j less than i minus 1. This is because the, so there is always going to be an edge between i and i minus 1 so that we need not consider the i minus 1th vertex. So we start from 1 and go up to i minus 1 and which and and we add an edge between them. And whenever we add an edge, we decrement m and we run this until m is greater than 0. 
So this is the algorithm we are going to follow. Now let's take another test case and do a dry run on this algorithm so that you understand it better. So now let's assume our n equals 5 and m equals 8. So first what do we do? We find the minimum number of edges to be drawn. So it is going to be 4. So we draw the graph with 5 vertices. And we have drawn 4 edges. So the step 1 is done. So we find the remaining number of vertices to be drawn. So it is going to be 8 minus 5 plus 1 which is going to equal which is going to be 4. So we need to add 4 more edges. So until m is greater than 0 we will be adding one edge from i to j and how i goes? i goes from 3 to n and j goes from 1 to i minus 1. So the first edge would be from 3 to 1 and then the next edge would be from 4 to 1. So we have drawn two edges. So now j will be at 2. So it will be from 2 to 4. So j has reached the end. So we will increment i and i will go to 5. And then the next edge would be from 5 to 1. So this is the graph we are going to print. So how do we print it? First we print the minimum edges that is going to be 1, 2, 2, 3. 3, 4 and 4, 5. Next we print these edges in the order i, comma j. So first it will be 1, comma 3. Next it is going to be 2, comma 4. Sorry, it is going to be 1, comma 4 which is going to be this edge and then it is going to be 2, comma 4 which is going to represent this one and then finally we will be putting 1, 5 which is going to be this edge and this will be our output for the case n equals 5 and m equals 8. So I hope you got the approach clearly. Now let's have a look at the C++ and Python code where you will be understanding this even better. So here is the C++ code for the approach I discussed earlier. So first I get in the number of test cases and for each test case I get in two integers n and m which are going to represent the number of vertices and the number of edges respectively. So first I decrement m by n minus 1 so that we get the remaining number of edges to be drawn and I print the minimum edges, minimum number of edges first. So I run a for loop from 1 until n minus 1 and then I print i and i plus 1. So next I run the for loop from i equals 3 so that we draw an edge from some vertex to the left of it and while m is greater than 0 the inner for loop is going to be from 1 to i minus 1 and we print j and i. It is your wish to print j and i or i comma j. It is totally up to you. And then for each edge we print, i will be decrementing m. And then also simultaneously after the inner for loop is terminated, i will be incrementing i. And so that this would print all the edges for the given case. So the same goes for the python too. So here I am for each test case, I take in two integers n and m and I decrement m so that we get the remaining number of edges to be drawn. So here I print the minimum number of edges that is going to be n minus 1 edges and then I run the for loop from i equals 3 with a condition that m is going to be greater than 0. The inner for loop is again going to run from 1 to i minus 1 and if at some point m is going to be less than or equal to 0 that means that we have already printed all m edges required so we break the for loop. Otherwise we print j and i and I decrement m for each edge being printed and after the inner for loop is terminated I increment i. So I hope you got the approach C++ Python code clearly. Let us meet in the next video. So that's it for today guys. After watching this tutorial try to code the solution on your own and submit it on CodeChef. If you understood this tutorial perfectly Please like this video and share it with your friends who are into computer programming. To stay updated, please subscribe to our channel and click the bell icon. You can also stay updated via our telegram group to which the link is in the description below. Thank you. Have a nice day.